Have you wondered how your birth control actually works? Like, how does it actually keep you from getting pregnant? If that has crossed your mind, then this video is for you. Hey everyone, welcome back. I am board certified OBGYN, Dr. Jennifer Lincoln. And today we are talking about how do these forms of birth control actually keep you from not getting pregnant. But before I jump into that, go ahead and like, subscribe, and turn on the bell so you never miss an upload. My channel is the health class you wish you had in high school, and I have a lot of birth control content that you can watch in this playlist up here. But today I'm talking about how the heck does it even work? So we're just gonna go through the list of the different methods. I'm gonna tell you how they work. I'm also gonna tell you how effective they are. And you are gonna have a lot of great knowledge so that you can have fun little facts at dinner parties or when you're at the bar. These are great pickup lines. First things first, let's talk about the birth control pill. And you can see in this image here that this is the normal fluctuation of hormones that you have in a menstrual cycle if you are not on any birth control. But what the birth control pill does is it delivers a steady state of hormones. With the combination pill, it's some form of estrogen and progestin, or with what we call the mini pill or the progestin only pill, it's just progestin. The failure rate for both of these methods are nine in a hundred. So that means if a hundred people use these for one year, nine are going to end up getting pregnant. So it's a good method, but it's not perfect. The combined birth control pill, which has estrogen and progestin in it, works by stopping ovulation. And what ovulation is, is when one egg in your ovary gets chosen that cycle based on the dance of hormones and it enlarges and it ruptures or bursts out of the follicle and then makes its way down the fallopian tube. The birth control pill makes this not even happen because it stops the process of an egg getting selected and ovulating because your body doesn't see that up and down dance of hormones that's needed for ovulation. Now the progestin only pill or the mini pill works differently. It primarily works by thickening the cervical mucus. So it's a medicine that you take that changes how your cervical mucus is and it's like a little barrier the sperm can't get through. Let's move on to the birth control patch and the vaginal ring. So the patch is a patch that you wear for weeks at a time. You can take it off and have a withdrawal bleed, but you don't need to. You could just keep using it. Or the vaginal ring, which you leave in the vagina. And again, you leave it in for three weeks, take it out and you can have a withdrawal bleed or you leave it in and you don't have a period. Both of these have estrogen and progestin in it. And even though they're different than taking a pill, they both work the same way in that they block ovulation. These pregnancy rates are almost exactly the same as the pill. So over a year of use, nine in a hundred people using it will be pregnant. Moving on to the birth control shot or what you might hear it be called as Depo or Depo Provera. This is a shot that you get once every three months. It has progestin only in it. This method works by preventing ovulation and thickening the cervical mucus. And pregnancy rates using this method are about six in 100 over a year of use. Or you can think of it another way, it has a 94% effectiveness. Now I'm going to talk about two methods that are the most effective forms of reversible birth control out there. The first up is Nexplanon or the arm implant. It's the size of about a matchstick and it goes right right under the skin in your arm. It has the same mechanism of action as Depo. So it blocks ovulation and thickens the cervical mucus. Do you wanna know how well it works? Fewer than one in a hundred people using this method will get pregnant after a year. So super, super, super reliable. The other form of long acting reversible contraception or birth control are the IUDs with the same exact pregnancy rate or failure rate as the Nexplanon. These are T-shaped devices that go into the uterus. They're placed in the office. And I have information about that up here because I always get tons of questions about it. And there are two different kinds. There are kinds with hormones and kinds that are non-hormonal and they work differently. The hormonal IUD, and you may hear names like Morena and Kylina and Skyla, they've all got very interesting names as all birth control seems to. These secrete progestin a little bit every single day. And the way that these IUDs work is primarily by thickening the cervical mucus. About 50% of the time, it will also block ovulation. But as you can imagine, only being doing that 50% of the time, that's not the primary way that it prevents pregnancy. Now the non-hormonal IUD, also known as the copper IUD or the Paragard IUD, works in a completely different way. It releases a little bit of copper that is toxic and damages the sperm. So that's how that method works. I do wanna highlight that neither the IUD nor the Nexplanon causes abortions. In fact, no form of birth control does. And you may hear different information out there based on misinformation and disinformation from certain organizations. They claim that because these methods often thin down the lining of the uterus, that somehow that causes an abortion. And that's absolutely positively not true. If you are pregnant and you have 
an implanted embryo in the wall of your uterus. None of these methods will do anything to cause an abortion. The last form of birth control I'm going to talk about is spermicide. With a pregnancy rate of about 28 in 100, if people use just this every year, it's not the best form of birth control, but it's way better than nothing. And it's much better if it's also combined with other methods of birth control like condoms, diaphragms, cervical caps, those kinds of things. So spermicide is a gel or a foam that's placed into the vagina and it has a chemical that either kills or damages the sperm. And when the sperm is damaged, it can't fertilize an egg. If you are curious more about non-hormonal forms of birth control, go ahead and watch this video right here. I go through all of them. So now you know how your form of birth control works and you can be more empowered to understand why a method is working or why you might want to try something different or you know understand why we might recommend one method over another for you. Birth control is not one size fits all and it's also not just about what's the most effective. It's what feels right for you taking into account what might be the best for your health, what you can actually use or remember to use, what you have access to. So if you have questions after this, go ahead and watch the video list that I shared before, but also know that you can talk to us and you can talk to your healthcare providers. Go ahead, drop your comments in the comment section below. As always, references and resources are in the show notes and happy contracepting. I hope that you enjoy knowing a little bit more about how your body works and I will see you next time. Bye-bye.